Welcome to the On the Edge podcast with your host. Iraq, how, how does that come about, and what is that like, again, being a blonde female musician from Canada playing for the U.S. troops in Iraq, I'm guessing in the middle of a war is why you were there. Um, what the yeah. fuck? What, what was yeah. that all about? So it was crazy. Well, what's crazy about this, so obviously I'm a realtor. We, my husband and I put an offer on the house. It was at the very end of 2008, so it's probably September. Um, and it was during the war. And I got a call that said, hey, um, you know, we're, we're going to Iraq. Our drummer couldn't make it. It was at, so it was an ACDC tribute. And I think Chris Slade, the actual drummer from ACDC, was supposed to go on the tour. Um, and then he couldn't make it at the last minute. So I think I had two and a half weeks notice. Um, and they gave me the list of the songs. We had, I think, two rehearsals. And not even enough time to go. 30 songs is a lot of songs. So we'd play for two, maybe three hours, two and a half hours, something. It was long. Um, and so I'm in the middle of buying a house. So stressful. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never, I didn't know anything about real estate. Um, and we moved into this house. We'd moved out of the apartment. So we're in a house. There's literally nothing there. It was a foreclosure. And before the house went to the bank, the seller or the owners took every single light fixture out of the house. So to have any light in the house, we needed to plug in lamps. So we went to Ikea and bought some lamps and had lamps and we were trying to fix it up ourselves. So we're pulling out carpet, scraping popcorn ceilings. We had no kitchen because the kitchen was gutted. We were going to reno it. And then I'm like, oh, by the way, honey, I'm going to go to Iraq for three Three weeks and at the time I was making extra money by being a nanny so I was really into music still so I was playing a lot of shows um, but I was also a part-time nanny for an amazing family um, in Silver Lake like the sweetest little boy so yeah so I got the call and then next thing you know I'm at the airport and we're on a plane and we fly into shoot where do we fly into the Beirut I can't even remember um and you know, what's crazy is I remember getting off the plane and it's the only time that I've ever traveled where I actually was scared. We got off the plane and our tour manager, who was also kind of security, was this massive guy and all the women are covered from head to toe. And we dressed modestly because we knew that we were going into a Muslim country. And, um, but the way that the men looked at us and it wasn't like, Ooh, it was like, I want to kill you. It was really freaking terrifying being in that airport and it was super packed and he's like, stay with me, don't do anything. And then we were flown um, from a military aircraft into Iraq and then we played, I think maybe eight, seven or eight different military bases throughout Iraq. So we would play a show and then we'd get, we'd be in a helicopter or we'd be in a carrier. I mean, we we're in all different types of aircrafts and we would fly to the next show. We never knew if we were playing, we never knew what was happening and for our own safety, they wouldn't tell us anything. So some, some warnings they'd say, okay, we just sit. And it's not like, it's not like there's a scheduled flight coming in, you know, where it's like, right. it'll be here in 20 minutes. You go and you sit and you wait on, you know, just a platform basically. And it could be half an hour. It could be four hours. So we just chilled and we would sit there and it was hot as fuck. It was, uh, over 110 degrees when we were there. It was so hot and really, really dusty. I mean, you're in the middle of the desert. And we would wait and then a flight would come and pick us up and we'd do our sound check. We'd go quickly, get something to eat. And then we'd start getting ready to play the show and we would play for three hours. And then we would do a meet and greet and a signing. And then we would go eat again and we'd sit. Usually we try and sit with just anyone because you know some of the bases we went to were very small and the guys that were there hadn't seen other people for five months six months so they just want someone to talk to so they probably hadn't seen a them. girl uh they probably had seen a blonde <laughs> yeah. hair girl in like a year you know um, right not not to be too raunchy but you were probably the standing fantasy of a lot of troops overseas <laughs> for some time they're like oh the hot blonde behind the drums you know I, I hope I hope that's not a guy with long hair back there or something you you, you probably uh, you probably impressed yeah, upon was... a, a lot of young men well what's crazy too is when I went to Iraq the one thing that stuck out and blew my mind was how young 
all the military guys were. I expected, and, and the Air Force too. Someone's flying you in a helicopter and you look and you're like, this kid's like 19 years old. You know, these guys were young, 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 young. And I just had this, I'm a very empathetic person. I'm a total empath. You'll know this from our politics. And I remember just looking out and being like, these guys are babies. They're so young. So we just sit and talk and we were there. Um, I don't remember this. Maybe it was Iraq. It, I think it was another tour. No, it was Korea and it was Thanksgiving. And to me, our Canadian Thanksgiving is different, um, a different time of year. But you could tell the kids that were sad and they were missing their home and they'd be sitting in the, the mess hall or whatever and just kind of their head down. So we go and talk to them and try and just boost morale a little. And it's weird because you feel almost, you, I felt really guilty because I felt like I had this amazing experience going to these places. You're treated like a freaking rock star. I mean, we were, I was just like some, some girl from Canada. I didn't deserve it, but we're treated really well. And you go and you sit and you see that what the guys are actually dealing with. We went and we toured some of the hospitals in Iraq and you meet some of the soldiers that had been, you know, through a lot of shit and seeing their friends get killed or their friends and you know you just pause for a second it's like i'm getting paid to go and play drums in iraq and these guys are giving up everything to be here and they're not getting the benefits that i you know you feel guilty because you're treated so well you you're meeting the all the heads up you know the the most um influential people in the military that are there and you're being you get to shake their hand and take the picture and stuff but you know, when these 18 year olds would say, thank you so much for coming in and you, you guys are amazing. And you're just like, well, we're not really doing shit. Like we were getting paid to be treated really, really well. And you guys are really doing the work. I mean, it, it felt, it felt a little weird about it. Kind of, yeah. it's almost like doing a big charity thing, but getting paid for it. Like it, it felt a little weird. It felt weird, but it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in my entire life. It's I, probably the thing other than my children that I'm the most proud of because yeah. I just uh, I feel so honored that I was able to have that experience. It's something I'll never forget. Kind of yeah, it's uh, pretty freaking cool. Kind of hard to complain about the missing light fixtures when you get home, when you see what people are living with right? in the military, it, getting shot right? at, you know, loss of loss of and we life went, and we went to, um, you know, there would be, we went to one base that was, 12 guys in bunk beds in one room with no air conditioning in Iraq with like it being 110 degrees. You know, it was just a whole, um, our, my favorite story from Iraq though. And I, hopefully I wouldn't get in trouble for saying this, but I, probably not. Um, we played a show and we got a la we finished the show and someone says, there's something for you guys from the special forces. And I'm like, Ooh, what's that? And we, it's a laminated invitation. Now you're in the middle of the desert in Iraq and you're like, how do they have a laminator? Anyways, it was like, so you guys think you're hot shit or so, or cool or something. 